Hello. In this third and final video on the work of Alfred Adler, I want to present an overview of his developed system of ideas. These include the importance of individual volition, motivation, social relations and involvement, and the specific concepts of life goals, self-ideal, the style of life, and social interest. I will also briefly mention his interest in birth order and his approach to therapy. The distinctive approach to understanding the human psyche which Adler developed was termed by him individual psychology. This embraced individual volition, life goals and self-understanding, but also emphasized the importance of the individual's wider social context, the social matrix within which the partial processes of the individual achieve meaning. For Adler, unlike Freud, the development of individual personality was always embedded in, and at least partly defined, by social relations. Thus, Adler's orientation was ultimately towards the social sciences and away from biology and medicine. Adler also emphasized the importance of the individual's own attitudes and purposes. In this, he was far more explicitly philosophical than Freud. A major influence here was Hans Weihinger's 1911 book, The Philosophy of As If, Weihinger's ideas having an almost immediate impact on Adler's thinking. Central here was the view that the individual lived by fictive goals that had no necessary counterpart in reality. Thus, we created a fiction that the universe is an orderly, determined affair and acted as if it were even though it might actually be chaos. In so doing, however, we made it appear orderly. Again, we created a god when we acted as if he existed. These fictive ideas might be true or false, but if we acted as if they were real, then they affected our thinking and behavior. In relationship to individual life, Adler used these ideas to rebut Freud's hard determinism. Freud had stressed the objective importance of causality, with constitutional factors and childhood experiences determining the individual's personality. But for Adler, aspects of self-determinism also had to be considered, and people were motivated far more by future expectations than past experiences. Individuals behaved as if motivated by goals and were guided in their behavior by these expectations. The real or fictional goals towards which an individual strived explained his behavior, even though he might be largely unaware of them. Of particular importance as a fictive goal was the individual's guiding self-ideal. This was the individual's unifying principles that safeguarded their self-esteem. This self-ideal led to each individual's characteristic style of life, which was the way in which a person's individuality was expressed in its own environment in its own unique way. This was the pattern of behavior by which the individual sought to reach his or her goals and included generalized ways of coping with the problems that they faced in life. Each individual style of life was normally a consistent unity and despite following different individual routes, each aimed for the security, unity, and oneness of the individual psyche. That this was the case was shown by the everyday perception that when this unity was not expressed, then the individual was acting out of character, a clear indication that individuals were assumed to normally act in character. For Adler, psychological problems could develop out of a faulty style of life. These commonly arose from three major types of childhood experience. Perceived inferiorities, neglect, and pampering. The impact of inferiorities built on Adler's earlier work discussed in the previous video. Children with infirmities or other things which gave them a sense of inferiority might consider themselves failures but with understanding parents or appropriate psychotherapy or their own efforts, they could compensate for these infirmities and transform them into strengths. 
as to pampering. This might produce a spoiled child who lacked social feeling and was entirely self-centered, expecting society to conform to his or her wishes, a perspective that was likely to lead to a clash between the child and society. On the other hand, childhood neglect could lead to a style of life dominated by seeking revenge against society. More generally, both neglect and pampering usually resulted in an individual who lacked the confidence to meet the demands of life. Linked to the concept of the individual's style of life was what Adler came to refer to as social interest. This was what Adler believed to be the individual's innate urge to adapt positively to the social environment which they experienced. It was particularly expressed in the major social ties of social contact with others, occupation, and love and marriage. In this regard, he assumed that everyone had an innate capacity for friendly and loving responses to other people, which enabled the individual to move towards social participation and integration. Contrary to his earlier belief that everyone was driven to strive towards superiority, his developed view was that social interest was more fundamental. It was only neurotics who felt inferior and strove towards superiority. Normal people didn't because of their developing social involvement. Given the importance of the major aspects of social interest, social contact with others, occupation, and love and marriage, Adler saw failure in any or all of these as psychologically threatening. Those who were unable to adjust to these three ties, or who sought to escape them, were potentially neurotic or delinquent. Those who refused them completely were likely to suffer from psychosis. Adler also considered sibling relationships as an important social factor helping to shape personality. These included birth order, which strongly impacted the child's perception of himself and his relationship with others. Thus, he believed that only children were most often spoilt by their parents, though alternatively sometimes hated by them. Without siblings, only children tended to dominate their parents and be hyper-intellectual and over-mature for their age, often interacting with adults in a very grown-up fashion. By contrast, children who were second-born dethroned the privileged position of the eldest child and often dominated both them and the parents. They were also often more competitive. Again, the youngest child was never displaced and remained little and helpless in the eyes of his or her siblings forever, often learning to get their way through stealth and guile. Turning now to treatment, as we have seen, Adler emphasized the individual's potential to resolve and balance out many of the problems they had for themselves, if they were helped to identify them clearly. Thus, the decision to compensate for inferiorities or remain a failure depended on the child's individual courage and interpretation of his situation, as well as parents or psychotherapy. Individuals who were not mere creations of the environmental forces to which they were exposed, but could employ their own creative powers. The individual fashioned his own unity, directed his own drives, and decided his own goals. Indeed, Adler's own response to his perceived inferiorities and the problems of his own childhood seemed like a kiss in point, the form of compensation he chose to follow being creative and constructive. It was common for a patient to come to a therapist because their lifestyle didn't provide a creative response to their life situation or resolve its problems. Unable to evade the conflicts which their life situation presented to them, the patient drew false conclusions about the world from his or her early social relations. The therapist's job was to cut through this erroneous style of life and suggest a new one. The patient could only change his style of life if he gained an understanding of his own early childhood maladjustments. In helping the patient to resolve his own problems, Adler particularly recommended three approaches. First, to study the family constellation from which the patient came 
so as to discern any sources of tension or maladjustment. Second, to infer from the patient's earliest memory or memories some of the aspects of their life ideal and goal. In Adler's own case, Adler realized that his own early childhood memory of deciding to become a doctor after he had faced the possibility of his own death had been a crucial factor in his life, and incidentally one which he checked by asking a sample of doctors what their earliest memories were and finding that most reported either recovery from a serious illness or a death in the family. Moreover, he also found that in families in which there had been a death, when he asked children what they wanted to be when they grew up, they most often answered a doctor or nurse. And finally, the therapist should investigate and interpret the patient's dreams to see in what way these allowed emotions to interfere with their style of life. Thank you for listening.